Sorry, I know I haven't done a video in a while, but I'm doing one now, today. Ooh, okay. Well, it's Saturday, um, and this is the last video for Chapter 6. So, um, since our class isn't probably going to get to Chapter 7 for another week, I'm not going to be posting Chapter 7. But I might tomorrow post Chapter 5, since we are probably going to get text tested on it. So yeah, and um, that's a tough chapter. This one's easy and light. So yeah, I'm probably going to go back tomorrow and do one video, but no promises. I'm going to try my best. So enzymes. Enzymes bind with reactants called substrates. A substrate is the reactant in a chemical reaction that is acted upon by an enzyme. There are many different kinds of enzymes depending on the type of reaction. For example, a single reactant substrate can be broken down into multiple products, uh, while two other substrates can be joined together, creating one large molecule. Substrates bind to the enzyme's active site. Chemically, enzymes are proteins, making the site to be a combination of amino acids, uh, of amino acid side chains, or R groups. These amino acids vary in many different ways, such as size, acidity, um, hydrophobia, so they can be hydrophilic or hydrophobic, and charge. The structure, sequence, and position of the, acid, of the active site create a specific environment. A specific chemical substrate is able to match that site. You, as you can see, there's an enzyme without a substrate. And there's a line pointing to the active site, um, so it's just the enzyme by itself. Next, the substrate comes along and tries to bind with the enzyme, but it can't because it doesn't fit perfectly, but just enough so that the enzyme can adjust. So the shape of the active site changes very slightly so that the substrate and the enzyme can bind. Since an enzyme is the uh, perfect place for a reaction to occur, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, the reaction occurs and you are left with some products. And in my diagram, there are two products, um, the little, I guess, semicircle thing and the triangle are now two separate things instead of one. So those are my products. And then they end up leaving the active site and the enzyme goes back to its original shape. But why is all this information important? Well, when an enzyme binds with a substrate, the activation energy of a reaction is lowered, allowing biological functions to be carried out more efficiently and with less energy. Enzymes also promote chemical reactions by bringing substrates together in optimal orientation. Specifically, they lined up the bonds of one molecule with the bonds of another. The enzyme's active site also creates an environment that is ideal for a reaction to occur. After the reaction, the enzyme will return to its previous state. In metabolism, enzymes are used to demonstrate which chemical reactions a cell can carry out and at the rate at which this is possible. These chemical reactions allow a cell to do its proper functions. Besides the enzyme substrate complex, cells use specific molecules to regulate enzymes. They do this either through promoting or inhibiting certain chemical reactions. Competitive inhibition is when a molecule that looks and acts similar to a substrate um, binds, with an enzyme, binds with an enzyme and prevents the enzyme from doing its function. This blocks the enzyme from actually doing anything, uh, thus prohibiting it. On the other hand, non-competitive inhibition is where a molecule binds to an enzyme but not an active site, adjusting its shape, therefore the function of the enzyme. This still allows the substrate to bind to it, the shape is just different now. The shape of the active site is just different now. The location where non-competitive inhibit inhibitors bind is known as the allosteric site. 
Speaking of allosteric sites, allosteric inhibition is where one inhibitor molecule binds to an enzyme at the allosteric site where their binding causes a structural change, making the enzyme less interested in the substrate. This type of inhibition also does not allow the enzyme to bind, thus prohibiting its function once again. So um, this is my lovely drawing of allosteric inhibition. So here's the enzyme. Uh, this is the allosteric site. This is the active site. Um, the allosteric inhibitor binds to the allosteric site, causing the active site to alter its shape from this, from this to this, and now the substrate can't bind and leaves. Um, yeah. So, allosteric activation is where activators bind to the allosteric sites, causing a structural change that increases the enzyme's desire to bind with the substrate thus promoting enzyme functions. So this is my other lovely diagram where you have your enzyme and the altered active site. And then you have your allosteric site, which is here. And you have an allosteric activator, which is this purple thing. Um, once the allosteric activated bi activator binds to the enzyme, um, the active site changes its shape, thus allowing the substrate to bind to it. And have a reaction. Yay! And that is it. You are now experts on enzymes.